Hello all and welcome to this AWS tutorial. In our tutorial today, we will discuss about AWS S3 Glacier and see how we can retrieve job output for any of our Glacier jobs. A couple of things to keep in mind. First is, a job ID does not expire for at least 24 hours after Amazon S3 Glacier completes the job. That essentially means that you can download the job output within the 24 hour period after Glacier completes the job successfully. Let's say if you are not able to download the output within the 24 hour period, there's a very high chance that the job will expire within a few hours after 24 hours, and then you've, you will basically land up losing that particular output. In that situation, the only option would be to start another job. But again, ensure that after the job completes, please ensure that you have downloaded the required output within 24 hour period. So in our previous sessions, essentially what we had done was, we had initiated two jobs. Our first job was to retrieve inventory of our vault, uh, called as NAM vault right here. And as you see, this is the location and this is the job ID. And the second job that we had instantiated was uh, basically to retrieve an archive. We had created, if you remember, two text files that we had uploaded as sample files. And uh, we had initiated a job to basically retrieve one.txt. Now let me quickly open it up and you'll see that this particular file does not have anything except for one text written right here. So basically we had initiated these two jobs and today we will see how can we retrieve the output. Okay, of these two jobs. So let me quickly switch to my commands uh, notepad. So as you see, these are the two commands that we will execute today. So the first command that we will execute today is to best basically retrieve the inventory for our NAM vault. Now let me switch to the console over here and so this is my uh, Amazon S3 Glacier right here. As you see, we can, you can see all the volts. And this is our NAM volt. And I have basically gone ahead and uploaded a couple of more archives. So if, as you see, I have a total of six archives now. And my inventory was last updated on 26th of December. Mind you, it does take a little while for it to update the number of archives. So be patient if you are trying to execute inventory retrieval job and your job uh, output basically comes blank or empty, okay? The archive lifts comes back as empty. That essentially means that Glacier has not yet updated uh, the archive in its own, within its own metadata, okay? So in that case, uh, just restart you know, the job again just execute a new job and you will be just fine. Um, just to let you know, it has happened with me a couple of times and in that situation, I just start another job um, after 24 hours or so, okay? But it's good to wait for a while. As you see, it, I've last updated my inventory on 26th and today is 31st. Okay, so uh, another thing that I wanted to show you was this particular notification. Now, if you have enabled notifications, okay, uh, in, on your uh, Volt, I think I had demoed that in one of the earlier sessions, then you will basically receive a notification in this form. So as you see, it's basically a JSON text right here. And the most important part of this is the status code that I've highlighted. So it's right there, as you see, the status code is succeeded. That essentially tells us that this was an inventory retrieval job and it has succeeded successfully. And this is the job ID. As you see, it's right here. This is my uh, job ID. Okay. So let us go ahead and now retrieve the output for this particular job. So let me go back to my commands notepad. 
And as you see, the command for this would be AWS Glacier get job output, the account ID, and then the hyphen, which essentially says it's the current account, the vault name, and finally uh, the job ID after that. The most important piece over here is this output.json, which essentially is the name of your output file. That, okay, this job has executed successfully, but where should I dump the output of this particular job? So you need to let me know that. Now, uh, basically what I'm expecting is a JSON output. Okay, so that's why I have named this file as output.json. So, uh, let me go ahead and copy this particular command. Okay, and then we will go ahead and copy it on our CLI right here. And it's going to be executed. So as you see, our command has executed successfully. And if I switch to, this is my folder right here, you will see that output our JSON is right here. Okay, so it has successfully created our JSON file. You see, as you see, it is 2KB. So let us go ahead and open this file. So this is our output.json. So as you see, this is the whole file and this is essentially nothing else but a JSON dump. So let me quickly copy this into a formatter and uh, copy it. So I have my JSON formatter opened up right here. And I'm going to paste this. And as you see, this is the formatted output on the right. Let me switch the style to tree. So this is the vault ARN right there. This is the inventory date. And this is the archive list. So as you see, it basically tells that I have uh, six archives. It's an array, as you see, from zero to five. And if you open it up, you'll be able to see the archive ID, the creation date, uh, right there. If you had given any archive description, you might be able to see that. So essentially this way, if you open up each one of these, you will be able to see the archive and the archive details. So this essentially tells you that, hey, this particular vault has uh, six archives in it, and these are the various archive IDs. So let's say if you had a vault and you wanted to know what are the various archives in that particular vault, this is the easiest way to get the list of uh, all the archives that are present in your vault. It's good to generally give a description so that you know what you're referring to rather than just scrolling through the list. Okay, otherwise another good practice, that's what I personally also follow, is that whenever I upload something, I try to, you know, have my own list on my own site. But hey, this was a file that I had uploaded and this is its corresponding archive ID. Okay, I mean, in case you even lose that, you can always go back and get the list of archives within your vault. Okay, so this was the output for our first job, which was inventory retrieval for our, our vault, which is NAMVOLT. Okay, so let me switch back to my commands. There it is. So the second job that we had uh, initiated was the archive retrieval job in wherein, you know, we have to fetch the one.txt file. Okay, and as you see, this is the command, and this is the, the job ID right here. Okay, so now let's switch to my commands notepad. And the command to retrieve the output. Now in this case, remember guys, we are going to actually retrieve the one.txt file. That is, that is the actual file that we are going to retrieve, okay? Unlike the first job and we where we retrieved the inventory of the vault. In this case, we are actually going to retrieve the archive from the vault. Okay, so let's say you'd uploaded a file and you want to retrieve it. Okay, your boss says, let's say, or that you need to retrieve a backup or you need to retrieve a specific file. You know that, hey, there's this old design specification that's present in the vault. This is archive ID. Can you go ahead and fetch that file for me? This is the way to do it. If you want to fetch a very specific file from the vault. So again, 
Uh, the command is the same. It's AWS Glacier, get job, output, account, ID, volt, volt name, job ID. But in this case, what since we know that we are going to retrieve a, a text file, okay, I have basically given the output file name as out1.txt. Now, this is the file that I expect to be created on my disk. And also, this file should have the same contents as one.txt because remember that's the archive that we are trying to retrieve. Okay, so let me copy this command. So it's right here and switch to my CLI and copy this command here. So as you see, it's executing this command right now. Okay, and again, guys, depending upon the size of the file, it will take a while. So if it takes some time, don't be surprised. I mean, that's exactly the reason why I have chosen a very small file for the demo. But this uh, retrieval of ar archive retrieval essentially could take a certain amount of time. So as you see, our, uh, our archive has been successfully retrieved. So let us switch to our Windows Explorer. And as you see, this is our out1.txt that's been created. So let us go ahead and open it. And as you see, this has our one text uh, output as expected. Okay. So this is how you go about fetching an, uh, or retrieving an, an archive from a vault. Now, we had used a very simple text file. You could potentially download, you know, a, a retrieve a zip file. You could retrieve any possible file type that you would want, okay? Ensure that you at least remember what kind of file it was because it should not happen that you had uploaded a JPEG and you land up saving it as a DXT, okay? That's not gonna open up. So you will need to know what you're trying to retrieve. And that's where I was saying that, hey, I maintain a list on my site. So you could potentially have an Excel spreadsheet wherein you have the name, the archive ID, maybe even the type associated with it or you could have that as a part of the archive description okay so uh, hopefully this session uh, was helpful okay so we learned two important things today how to retrieve job output for inventory retrieval and how to retrieve job output for archive retriever so thank you so much uh, for your time and i shall see you shortly in some other video. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye-bye.